Hey guys, Karen Cybertron Zang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online VGC 15 ladder and provide live commentary as I go in our first episode back since US Nationals. Since I finished in the top 4 at Nationals, I figured it'd be pretty fun to feature my Nationals team this week on Road to Ranked. I know it's going to look a bit familiar, but trust me, it plays out quite differently from the original sand team that I used for quite a while on this channel. And for those that don't know, of course, I did finish 4th at US Nationals this past weekend, locking on my invitation to the World Championships, uh, the second day of competition actually, which is pretty exciting. I posted a thank you video actually thanking all of you guys for being awesome fans and supporters throughout the weekend, so if you have not seen that, I highly recommend it. I shall link it in the description below. But we're going to jump into the ladder in our first game back, currently sitting with a rating of 1771. Uh, of course, the team is Salamence, Amoongus, Aegislash, Tyranitar, Rotom Wash, and Landers incarnate form. Landers incarnate really changing up the team a fair amount as we find Chris from Mexico with a rating of 1763. As always, if you enjoy Road to Rank, please share your support by leaving a like on the video. I'd really really appreciate it. Uh, Chris here has got a really strong team of Sylveon, Heatran, Kangaskhan, Landorus, Zapdos, and Milotic. And Milotic is a Pokemon that saw a lot of usage at Nationals, uh, most notably on Wolfie Glick's team and on the Junior National Ta Champions team with the Moranga Berry. Uh, hilariously enough, I actually tested that going into Nationals. Um, I was considering replacing my Rotom Wash for it, but ultimately I decided Rotom with Will O Wisp was too important. Uh, otherwise, a relatively standard looking team here from Chris, Tailwind support from Zapdos, Fake Out from Kangaskhan. Um, you know, we did see a bunch of different Sylveon sets at Nationals, for example, Blake Hopper's Life Orb Helping Hand variant, and then there was Angel Miranda's Pixie Play with Calm Mind Hidden Power Ground, and of course, here's your common choice spec Sylveon, so it's hard to really predict what's coming your way. A uh, Landorus here is actually really good because it can just knock out Heatran and my opponent's Landorus, not sure if he's anticipating that. I don't want to carelessly lead here because leading into my Lodic would cause big issues. I actually really, really like the Tyranitar Landorus lead here, I think, from my side. Just because it sets up the sand immediately and you know puts on a lot of pressure on my opponent's end. I still think Salamence is pretty good here against the Sylveon and the Kangaskhan. Uh, and Double Edge still does a ton of damage, obviously, to my Lodic and even Landorus. So I'm going to go with that. Now for the fourth one, I'm leaning towards something that I can check the Sylveon with. Um... You know, Amoongus is actually pretty solid here because I can switch into Kangaskhan's fake outs slash double edges slash, you know, you know fighting type attacks. Um, but Aegislash here obviously a bit better for damage output. So the question is, do I want damage or do I want something that can spore? Uh, and it's a kind of a tough question here, but I'm leaning actually towards the Amoongus here. Now normally I would go with Aegislash, but the reason why I want Amoongus is because, um, because of the Milotic, basically. A Milotic is a Pokemon that's very, very difficult to knock out, especially if you don't have super effective attacks. And I am keeping Rotom Wash on the bench here, uh, mainly because my opponent, first of all, is Kangaskhan and Sylveon, both Pokemon Rotom, uh, you know, can deal with because of the Citrus Berry, but at the same time, doesn't like facing against too much. Um, so I'd rather pick four Pokemon I feel a bit more comfortable with, but we'll see how these leads pan out as I go with my Sand lead of Tyranitar and Landorus Incarnate form against Zapdos and Kangaskhan, which is... Not perfect, but not terrible either. Uh, of course, I set up the sand here, which is great, but the difficulty lies in the fact that uh, he's probably going to want to fake out Tailwind this first turn, maybe even go for a power-up punch. So one interesting play I could make is... Hmm. No, you'll see one of the issues with this team is actually I don't have, you know, when I bring Lander, Salomon, and Amoongus, the uh, resistance to ice isn't fantastic. Um, but, you know, I do want to switch in here if I can. I would probably fake out Tyranitar here and hit him power ice slash tailwind. So I think I'm gonna predict the fake out onto the Tyranitar slot, switch into a Moongus. And I'm gonna actually just go for a Earth Power onto Kangaskhan. Let's see if we can knock out Kangaskhan immediately. I think it's highly unlikely my opponent fakes out the lander slot here, so I'm risking the fact like he might Tailwind or he's going to hit him Power Ice, but uh, I think he's going to hit him Power Ice, but wow, excellent read there, he switch out Kangaskhan into Landorus, fantastic play on my opponent's end there, definitely was not anticipating that, but it makes a lot of sense because you get the Intimidate off against both my attackers. Uh, so the question here is, does Zapdos go for a Tailwind as I whiff my Earth Power? He does go straight for the Hidden Power, which makes me look very, very silly, that should be able to pick up the Knockout onto my Landorus as it does. So wow, fantastic turn on my opponent's end, and things are looking really bad for me right from the start as Zapdos reveals the uh, Life Orb, not an item you see on Zapdos every day. So, that makes this match a lot more difficult to win now. 
but it's still possible. Uh, you know, there were a lot of games where I actually lost Lander or Psy carelessly like that, and that's why I like best of three play, because you'd be able to figure out ways to come back, uh, though this one does look a bit more difficult to deal with. Uh, however, I do get the Salamence in for free, getting the Intimidate off. I think here I'm just going to go straight for the Spore into Zapdos, Mega Evolve, and Protect. Uh, worst case, Zapdos gets a Tailwind up, but Lander's is in a pretty precarious position here. Uh, he's probably going to want to U-turn out. Um, but I don't want to risk losing another Pokemon, especially to that Life Orb Hidden Power Ice. Uh, if Zapdos didn't have the HP Ice, there was actually a chance that my Landers could have survived there, but this Zapdos opting to be a bit more offensive than the Zapdos is we normally see in VGC with the Citrus Berry. So I'm a bit curious about its moves. I wonder if it carries something like Heat Wave as well. Regardless, Salamence here is just going to protect. I presume Landers is Choice Scarfed here, but uh, getting a Spore off would be huge. So I'm just going to protect here and Mega Evolve to get the speed boost, and he does have the Heat Wave as I anticipated. Now, Amoongus actually avoids it, which is very good fortune. I don't think the Earthquake Heat Wave combo would have actually knocked me out, which is why I went for that play. Um, but another interesting thing to note, he actually did not have Choice Scarf on the Landers as Zapdos outsped him, so uh, it's actually not good for me. But I do get a lot of momentum back here by getting the Zapdos asleep, so that's good. But... Still, you know, I gotta feel a bit lucky here that I managed to avoid the heat wave. Uh, I don't think it mattered too much since, you know, does it would have brought me probably around 70 HP, but, you know, obviously I avoid too much damage. Uh, so now the question is, is my opponent gonna rock slide? Because one play I wanna make here is actually switch out into Tyranitar and Hyper Voice. That way I can rock slide Hyper Voice combo for the knockout the following turn, and that's exactly what I'm gonna go for. Uh, I got a bit lucky there that Zapdos didn't reveal a Tailwind, but there's a chance that Zapdos doesn't actually have Tailwind. Uh, because we've seen Thunderbolt, we've seen HP Ice, um, or we haven't seen Thunderbolt, but presumably as Thunderbolt. Uh, the last ones either protect Tailwind or Roost, and I would actually guess protect on a offensive Zapdos like my opponents. Uh, regardless here, I know that my Salamence will outspeed my opponent's landers and i know that tyranitar can take a minus one earthquake with relative ease so unless he superpowers the amoongus slot i'll be able to get tyranitar in for free here uh, and you know uh, we'll see what item the landers has here could actually be the um assault vest uh, don't think so there but not entirely sure Maybe he's Assault Vest, but not too bulky. And he does go for the Rock Slide, which is alright with me, because now uh, Tyranitar puts in a lot more pressure with Rock Slide, and you see Mega Salamon so bulky there, just naturally, uh, able to take that Rock Slide with ease after the Intimidate, which is why I really, really love Mega Salamon. Um, so now I look like I'm in a much better position than I was maybe two turns ago, and that's, you know, me basically getting in uh, this Tyranitar in for free. Uh, with the Moongus in the back and, the, you know, that being a great counter to Kangaskhan, I actually feel a lot better about this match than I did two turns ago when, you know, I just lost Landers for free. Uh, looks like my opponent's not going to protect with either of his Pokemon, so I should be able to pick up a double knockout here with Rock Slide and with Hyper Voice, but Landers might be able to hang on. Is it bulky enough? Let's see. It's not, so I pick up the double KO here, and suddenly it's a 3-2 game uh, after I, you know, I lost my Landers immediately. And you'd imagine my Landers was really important in this match because Earth Power does over 50% to Kangaskhan. Uh, I, can, I can Stone Edge the Zapdos, especially with the Sand Force, and I can Hidden Power Ice the Landers. So kind of sucks that I lost it that early, but at least I put myself into a more manageable, posi manageable position. Uh, unfortunately, though, my opponent reveals Heatran, which obviously is not a fun Pokemon to deal with at this point in the game, uh, but still. Definitely far from over, yeah. Uh, let's see, I think here I'm actually just going to go straight for the Rock Slide and the Double Edge. Or maybe I should Draco Meteor here. Yeah, I like Draco a bit more. Just so I don't take the recoil damage. Though, actually, I'm not sure if Draco plus double um, Rock Slide can KO, so I'm just going to go for the 100% accurate move here. Uh, because Kangaskhan here can only fake out or, you know, attack one of my two Pokemon, so I should be able to get a knockout in the next two turns, as long as it doesn't have Protect. Uh, if it chooses to Protect here, though, I'll be able to get a chance to flinch the Heatran. Uh, he's just going to go for the fake out here, though. Uh, and I do feel a bit silly, actually. I should have switched Salamence out into Amoongus to get that Rocky Helmet damage, but I was, was fearing, like, he might go straight for a low kick. Um, you know, I do get the Rock Slide off here, but it's going to be a really tight finish to the game, I think. Uh, I actually get the flinch onto Heatran, which is huge. Uh, really unfortunate for my opponent there. Just because, I actually, with the Sandstorm going down, um, I would have been able to survive, but uh, now this game is a lot more interesting. I think he has to Sucker Punch Salamence. I don't even know if that's enough to knock me out. So I think here I'm just actually going to go for the Rock Slide and for the... Uh, I'm still going to go for Double Edge here. Yeah, he's not going to protect, and that should be... Not game yet, but let's see. 
Double Edge knocks out the Kangaskhan in one hit. He was probably predicting me to switch out into Amoongus. So, I knock out the Kangaskhan with relative ease. Uh, Tyranitar gets a Rock Slide off, and, you know, now it's Tyranitar against, or, and Amoongus against Heatran. And one more Rock Slide should actually knock out Heatran. And unfortunately, my opponent's Heatran just not getting an attack off with the Rock Slide flinches. Uh, it's actually really funny to me because I didn't get a single Rock Slide flinch really at Nationals until, like, top 8. But, um, you know, that's one of the nice things of using a Choice Carb Tyranitar. So, I do feel a bit bad, but... Uh, you know, I would have liked to win that game without the RNG on my side since I felt like uh, I had it towards the end. Um, but really close game regardless, and we're going to be able to pick up a win after a really scary, uh, you know, start. Uh, and that's one of the things with this team. Even if you start down 4-3, you can still come back if you play well enough. So uh, pretty pleased with that victory as we're just going to jump back onto the ladder. Already actually over 1,800, which is really exciting. Um... I actually was recording a game before this episode, and unfortunately it disconnected uh, on my opponent's end, so I got rating points from that. So that's pretty cool that we've already reached 1800, which is nice, especially with this team. We're going to find Danny from Mexico with a rating of 1731 for our next opponent of today's episode. Uh, Danny's got a bit more of a defensive team here as opposed to the offensive team we saw last time with Venusaur, Heatran, um, Suicune, you know, all three of those actually part of the Apex team I used way back, and then Thunders, Landers, and Scrafty. So Ghoul Intimidate here, Mega Venusaur as my opponent's mega double speed control with thunder wave and potential tailwind or maybe even icy wind from suicune and then there's heatran um let's see immediately i could tell landris loves this you know game in general just because of its ability to one hit ko heatran and landris once again um but you know can fall victim to a hidden power ice or an ice beam from either thunderous or suicune so i'm gonna have to watch out for that um hmm. i kind of like the salamence lead here actually his team is kind of weak against salamence uh, yeah, I actually really like Solomon's Rotom Wash here, with... Do I want Tyranitar in the back? The question here is, is Amoongus worth bringing? And I'm leaning towards no here. Uh, normally I like Amoongus as a Kangaskhan counter. In this case, my opponent doesn't have Kangaskhan. I mean, he has Scrafty, but not as essential. Angus not too bad, but I might actually go Tyranitar Landers as my back too. And I think that's what I'm going to go for. So I'll lock in and we'll see how this plays out. Uh, the best thing about Amoongus with this team is it protects you from all those random HP Ices and Ice Beams. So uh, Amoongus being as bulky as it is isn't really too KO'd by even the super effective Ice type attacks. Uh, so it partners really nicely with Solomon's. But in this game, I'm just going to go more with the offense here, going with Solomon's and Rotom as my lead. My opponent decides to bring the Thunderous and the Landorus, and, you know, Rotom Wash loves this position. Uh, of course, it can get swaggered, as some of you may remember, in the 2013 World Championships, or even at Nationals this past weekend when Paul Chua swaggered my Rotom, but regardless, it's fine. Uh, so it's also interesting to note my Intimidate went before his Landorus's, so there's a decent chance here that, or not a decent chance, but he's not Choice Scarf, so he could be Bandit, could be Assault Vested. Um, which makes it pretty interesting. Now, I presume he's going to want a Thunder Wave Salamence. This first one, I'm just going to protect here. He could also make a really smart play and double up into my Rotom slot. Um, actually, maybe I don't want to... I, mean, I think I should switch out Salamence. Yeah. yeah um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to switch out into Tyranitar actually here and go straight for the Thunderbolt onto Thunderous. Uh, so knowing that his Landorus is in Choice Scarf means that my Landorus will be able to hit him Power Ice him. So uh, I want to make sure like he can't Thunder Wave anything more than the Tyranitar here because I want my Landorus incarnate form, uh, you know, not to... To avoid a Hidden Power Ice, I want my Salamence to avoid a Thunder Wave. Uh, he actually does predict me to go for the Protect here, so he goes for a Thunderbolt onto Rotom. That does a lot of damage. Turns out he's actually the Life Orb variant, which makes a lot of sense. So, makes this game a lot more difficult to win. What does Landorus go for here? He's going to go for the Rock Slide, just going for the Flinch right away, saying, you know what, I'm predicting your Salamence to protect. I'm going to try to pre uh, prevent your Rotom from attacking. Unfortunately, uh, doesn't get it, though, so I do get the Thunderbolt off against Thunderous, and now Rock Slide will knock it out. So, decent turn for me there. Um, but I'm wondering if his Life Orb Thunder here is carrying uh, Thunder Wave, because he could Thunder Wave my Tyranitar. That would not be pleasant. Yeah, unfortunately his Thunder is also outspeeds my uh, Lander, so I'm actually, yeah, my Lander is incarnate. So I'm just going to actually try to knock out his Thunder here. He might protect, but then I could burn the Lander with the Will O Wisp here. So we'll see what happens. I also obviously have the flinch chance in my favor since my Tyranitar is currently the fastest Pokemon on the field. Uh, it's weird when you say that just because Tyranitar is such a slow Pokemon, but with the Choice Scarf, you can see how big of an offensive threat it is to the majority of the format. So, uh, you know, that Thunderous, obviously being as feral as it is, uh, might carry Protect. He actually opts to switch out, which is a really clever play. I think Scrafty might be coming in here, but it's actually going to be Venusaur, which I'm more than okay with because any free damage against Venusaur is good damage. 
Uh, and he doesn't protect with the Landris here either, so surprising move. I'm going to be able to burn it here and get a Rock Slide off. That does a fair amount of damage. He does reveal the superpower, and I'm actually really happy about that because it means a complete free switch into the Salamence, which I have in the back. And I get to burn the Landris as long as will is connects here, so uh, even though I lose Tyranitar there, that turn ends up working a lot, I'd say, in my favor. Uh, fortunately, will does disconnect with that Landris, so that basically shuts it down for the remainder of the game as well, making this game a lot more manageable. And now I get a free switch into my Salamence, so things are looking quite good, despite the fact that my opponent is up 4-3. Uh, you know, Venus are already lost half its HP, Landris burned at around half HP, Thunder is heavily damaged as well, and I get Mega Salamence in, one of Mega Venusaur's biggest counters. Uh, now, you know, Mega Venusaur typically is bulky enough to survive um, just even the strongest physical type attacks. So, for example, my Mega Venusaur way back could survive attacks. But uh, in this case, you know, I'm just going to Hyper Voice here. And I could, you know, go for the Thunderbolt onto Venusaur for insurance damage. But I could also Thunderbolt Landers, predicting it to switch out into um, Thunder. So I guess I could also Hydro Pump in case he doesn't switch out. Now, I think Hyper Voice should knock out Thun Venusaur. He also doesn't know what kind of Salamence I am. Uh, his Landris is doing absolutely no damage, so he's at minus 3 attack and burnt. Uh, so I think he has to switch out here. I mean, I guess he could go for a Rock Slide. But uh, I'm going to Hyper Voice, and... You know what? I don't care if he Giga Drains Rotom. I'd rather... I don't want to knock out Landris. If possible. I don't want to give him a free switch in, I guess. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I'll Hyper Voice, and I'll just Thunderbolt the Landorus slot. You know, if he doesn't switch out, that's fine. He does switch out, which is perfect. I am really going to be able to punish the switch in. Hopefully seeing the uh, Thunderous here, actually it's Suicune, which is even better for me, because I did go for the super effective Thunderbolt. So, you know, that's one of the cases where I figured it'd be relatively safe to go for the Thunderbolt on that slot. You know, even if I didn't, Landorus is at minus 3 attack, or minus 2 attack. Yeah, minus 3 attack because of the superpower, 2 intimidates, and the burn uh, literally would not do any damage. So we'll see whether Venusaur protects her or not. If he does not protect, uh, this is actually going to just be impossible for him. Not impossible, but very, very difficult for him to win. And if he, you know, uh, does go for an attack, I'm not sure if he'll be able to survive Hyper Voice. Uh, he actually does go for the protect, so this Suicune's going to be taking a Hyper Voice Thunderbolt, and then I can just Hyper Voice Thunderbolt once again the following turn. Um, so, you know, Thunderbolting the Suicune slot, fortunately, really, really paying off here. Let's see how much damage it does. Should bring it around under half. Uh, yep. Uh, actually gets a paralysis as well, which is pretty good fortune here. Does it have the citrus berry? It does. You know, which makes sense. Probably the most common item you see on Suicunes. So, things are looking very, very good for me right now. As all his Pokemon are heavily damaged. If my opponent wants to win this game, he's going to have to rely on that Thunderous for sure. Because it outspeeds um, my Rotom and my Landers Incarnate form. But, the nice thing here is I can just Hyper Voice with my Salamence. And Venusaur, you know, has to switch out here, otherwise he's going to get knocked out. So I'm just going to Hyper Voice and actually just Thunderbolt the Suicune slot. Uh, right now, I think one way my opponent can win is setting up Tailwind and then flinching me with Landorus' Rock Slide and Venusaur getting Sludge Bombs and Giga Drains off. Uh, so I think the right play for my opponent here is to switch Venusaur into Thunderous, hope that I don't knock out the Suicune, and then if not, uh, try to Thunder Wave my Salamence in the following turns. If he even has Thunder Wave, since we have not seen it yet. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually doesn't carry it, because he is the offensive variant. But, we'll see. Uh, regardless, that Thunderbolt onto Suicune really, really helping me out. He's actually going to stay in with both Pokemon, which works out fantastically for me here, because I'm just going to be able to pick up a double knockout. Uh, and unfortunately, that was a really tricky position for my opponent to be in, because, you know, what can he really do at that point in the game? Um, and I think he definitely was not anticipating me Thunderbolting the Lander slot, but, you know, those are the plays you really need to make when you're already slightly ahead and you want to just pull away with the game, so... Uh, you know, that's why I love this team. It really gives you those uh, ability uh, to really hit most of the Pokemon in the format for big, big damage. So, I pick up a huge double knockout here, and it's actually going to be really difficult for my opponent to close this one, I'd say, just because of the fact that, uh, well, first of all, I don't know whether Thunderous carries Thunder Wave or not, because if he doesn't carry Thunder Wave, my Salamence is guaranteed to outspeed, and that's going to spell doom for my opponent. Uh, Landers here, however, does get the Intimidate off against both my Pokemon, obviously helping him out. Um, and he's burned, you know, so I'm just gonna go for the Draco Meteor onto the Thunderous and the... I'm actually gonna double target Thunderous here because I know my Landorus Incarnate form wins the game in the back. Uh, he doesn't protect with either Pokemon, that's fine, so that's gonna be a win for me here because Landorus Eye in the back has Hidden Power Ice as Draco connects with Thunderous. And now the reason why I doubled on Thunderous is I know that if your Thunderous protects, Rock Slide's not doing very much damage to either of my Pokemon. Um, you're not gonna be able to knock me out here, as you see here. He is gonna go for the Rock Slide. Uh, even with Sandstorm damage, that's not gonna be able enough to knock out Rotom, so that's why I made the safest play possible. Uh, Sandstorm subsides here, which, you know, I was counting as well. 
well. So, uh, you know, just to go back into that play, at that point it was insurance, right? If you uh, target down the Rotom, then Draco obviously just knocks you out. Uh, even if I miss, I can just Draco once again the following turn. If you target Salamence with a Hidden Power Ice, you need to Rock Slide Flinch me to even have a chance at winning the game, and I had, I'd have to miss the Draco Meter as well. So, uh, just making the safer plays possible, since once Thunderous goes down, I know the Lander's Eye in the back of the game wins the game for me. So now I'm just going to be able to get a Hyper Voice Hydro Pump off, and that's going to be game. Yeah, that Lander is definitely Assault Vested, as you see. Uh, so slow, Rotom Wash even outspeeding it, but... Uh, double target here, gonna be able to pick up the knockout and gonna be able to seal up this game for us. So, we're able to take two wins in a row in today's episode. This one probably a bit more decisive than the last game, which was, uh, you know, slightly influenced by the RNG there in the end with the rock side flinches. But uh, I'm really glad to highlight two really fun games with my Nationals team immediately back. Um, unfortunately, Lander side didn't really get to see much usage since it uh, fainted right away in the beginning of that first game and uh, was in the back for the second game. But uh, trust me, it's a really good Pokemon and I'm sure I'll be featuring it in the future episodes but yeah that's gonna be it for this episode guys leave a like if you enjoyed it like always i really hope you did i had a lot of fun and it's uh, definitely one of my favorite teams probably my favorite team that i've used this season so yeah leave a like if you enjoyed and i'll see you guys in tomorrow's episode all right peace